One common problem when developing applications with MVVM or other sort of architectures that really are decoupling components is sending messages between those components. The whole idea of using this architecture is to keep them decoupled so they're not tightly coupled and they don't reference each other. But sometimes you need to pass the data between the two or notify them when something updates. And that's where a messenger comes in. Today, I'm going to break down a completely cross-platform messenger implementation from the .NET Community Toolkit that'll work in any .NET application. So tune in. Hey everyone, I'm James and I'm back with another video, this time talking about the messenger service inside of the .NET Community Toolkit for MVVM. Now the .NET Community Toolkit for MVVM, I've talked a lot about on a lot on this channel. And I have videos up over here and down over there and over here and all in the places talking about all that goodness. It just reached version 8.0, which brings in all those beautiful source generators and all sorts of IOC stuff and all sorts of good stuff. But today I really wanna just break down one of my favorite new components, which is the Messenger API. This gives you a weak, and a strong messenger for your applications. So this is going to really enable you to keep things decoupled, but send messages when different components need to update. So what do I mean? Well, let's check it out. Now over here, I have a very simple task application. This is actually coming from the .NET MAUI beginner series that I recorded that you can find over on the .NET YouTube. I'll link it up over here. This is an application where you can add tasks. You can click on one. You can go back just like this and you can also swipe to delete. Now, when you swipe to delete, the implementation knows about what's in the UI, but what happens when you want to delete from right here? So if you wanna click and delete that, well, I need to implement that because I didn't do that in the beginner series. So we're gonna do it today. What we wanna do is send a message between this page back to the other page and tell it to remove itself automatically. So when I go back, it's automatically done. This could be really great when you need to send different notifications, not only for deleting, but for adding or updating, at least tell it what information to do. Okay, so let's hop into the code. So the first thing that we're gonna see over here is I have my detail page and I have a delete button. Now that is inside of my detail view model. And so far I have a simple relay command. This is gonna use that source generator there from the MVVM community toolkit, and it is gonna implement delete command for me automatically. All right, now from there, we're gonna to need to actually implement this thing. If we go and look, we have this go back, so that's kind of cool, um, but we also have our main view model. Our main view model here is that first page, so we have an observable collection of just strings, so nothing fancy here, just a string. We have uh, the observable property of text, so whenever I went and entered something here like hello world and hit add here, that gets updated and it gets added into the list. So we can see it right here. And of course, you can actually follow along this application as I'm building it in that beginner series if you wanna build your own from scratch, literally file new. So here's that delete, it's very simple. Now, is this the best way to delete and add items because there's no identifier, it's just a string? No, but it's a good, it's a good sample uh, for at least doing this. So the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is go into our NuGet packages. So I'm gonna stop debugging pull up our NuGet, NuGet package manager. And what you want to have installed is the community toolkit.mvvm by Microsoft. That is the .NET community toolkit for MVVM. It has all sorts of good stuff in there. You already saw the source generators that I'm using. Version 8.0, that's what I'm using right now. So what we want to do is we want to send messages to and from. Now, if I go into my main view model, this view model is going to subscribe to basically messages kind of pub sub. The detail view model is going to send a message to delete that item, and then it's gonna go ahead and navigate back. So we need a message to send across the wire. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into, I have a messages folder, and we're gonna add a new class. And let's call this delete item message. And the whole idea here is that every message is sort of like an action that you may have. So here we're gonna say delete item message, and that's gonna be the message. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix this up because we don't need any of this junk in here. And we'll just say public class. Now inside of here, what we're going to do is we're going to um, inherit from value changed message. And it is going to be of a specific type. 
and that specific type is going to be string. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this in, and there we go. So using community toolkit.mvvm.messaging.messages. All right. Now inside of here, this value change message is going to enable this sending of a string in this case. Now, if we go ahead and right click and say go to definition, what we'll see in here is that we have basically just a value. It's very, very simple class. So it's just something we implement. So the messenger knows to be able to send it or not. All right. Now this type string is important. This is the message that I'm going to send across. So if you had a database item or you had a user class or a person class or a dog class or a cat class, that's what you'd want to put in. This is your message. This is what you're going to send. Now Visual Studio is going to create the, the constructor that's required and it needs to take in a constructor of the same type. And that's literally our message. Create a message, create one that takes in a string. It's going to pass it to the backing value store so it knows to pass that back and forth. And that's it. That's our message. Easy peasy. Pretty rad. Okay. So now what we can do is go back into our main view model and we're going to want to register. Now I mentioned earlier that inside of there, we have a, a weak reference manager, not the weak event manager that's coming from .NET Maui, which I'm using here, but specifically the weak reference messenger. As you can see, it's coming from the community toolkit.mvvm.messaging. We also have strong reference manager. Now, in this case, weak reference um, ma messenger is going to use weak, weak references. So it'll be automatically able to be garbage collected and all that stuff. But if you want to use the strong reference, you want to automatically register and unregister manually, um, you can go ahead and do that as well. We're going to use the weak reference manager. And I can say default here. Now, I'm going to say default, and it's going to return to me a weak reference manager implementation. And what that means is if you want to pass that into, um, into a dependency uh, injection service, you can do that as well. So for example, if I go to um, go to definition here, we can see that's an iMessenger. So if I really wanted to, I could come in and pass in an iMessenger here, right? And I can go ahead and pass that down into my dependency injection. So just because I'm using the static here doesn't mean I'm going to need to um, automatically um, not get that DI IOC goodness, which I talked about in a previous video. So inside of here, I can check to see if something is registered. I can register it. I can send a message. I can unregister. I can unregister all. What we're going to do here is we're just going to say register. We're going to give it a type. And this type specifically is going to be that message. So delete item message, just like that. Bring in that namespace. Boop. There we go. And now I'm going to drop this down. We can pass in the constructor. And the constructor is going to be able to take in one of two things. So um, let me go ahead and pull, pull this over here if I can. There we go. So the first thing it's going to take is either an I recipient, which I'll talk about in a second, or it will take in a recipient, which would be this main view model, and then this uh, message handler, which is just going to be a lambda. So I can say this, and then I could say um, um, the object itself and then the message itself here. So we'll go ahead and do this. And now we can see if I do M, it's going to be the delete item message. R is just going to be an object, which would be the sender the, the, that's going on here. Cool. So M dot, and we're totally good to go. So what we could do is we could come in and then call delete and pass it M, which would be my string. There we go. Now, in this case, we probably also want to make sure we're on the main thread and we could uh, go ahead and, and do that as well. So here we have our, our main void. I'm oh, sorry, this is our M dot value. So there we go and get on there as well. So if I really want to make sure that it's on the main thread, I could use uh, main thread dot um, begin invoke on main thread here. And in this case, this is going to be uh, coming from uh, Don in Maui. Um, but you could also ensure that you're uh, doing this with a dispatch or whatever UI framework you're using. This just happens to be a .NET MAUI application. So here, you know, this is important. I don't know what thread this is coming from. If I'm sending that message from a background thread, how that is going to handle it. So I'm just going to do it there. Uh, Sergio can correct me if I don't need to do that or not. But, you know, at least main thread is going to check 
to see if I'm on the main thread ahead of time. So now what we need to do, now that we're registered it here, is we need to go ahead and send it. So again, I come to my detail view model, and what I'm going to do here is, I don't know if it needs to be asynchronous, but at least we're going to go back async, so let's go ahead and at least do that. Um, we're just going to go ahead and say week, um, week reference manager dot, and here again, I'm going to bring in that namespace, week reference oh sorry not mess manager messenger and here i can go ahead and bring in my default and i'm going to say this time send and now what i need to do is just give it a new delete item command and pass it in in this specific case the text that is coming in because that's what i have bring in that uh, namespace as well, delete item message. I'm going to keep it legit. And, and just as I was typing it, because you, you told me you like it when I make mistakes. So there we go. So we're going to send the message. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say await go back. So that's why we have the async there. And that's it really. And now what I should be able to do is navigate into an item, click on delete, it's going to send a message across. And what we should get over in our main view model, if we go over here, is that specific um, message being received by our main view model. Then we're going to navigate back. And since we're updating this inside of an observable collection, we're going to automatically see that deleted. And we probably won't even see it if it's that fast. So let's give it a second here to compile up and deploy. All right, so our application is up. Let's add a task in here. I'll say subscribe and like, if you haven't done that already. Let's go ahead and add it. I'm gonna tap on it now. And now I'm gonna hit delete. And here we go, check this out. We've sent over a message and our value is subscribe and like. Now, if I go over here to our message, we can see that the main view model, sorry, the R is the recipient. So that is who is receiving it inside of this Lambda. So we're totally good to go. So the main view model is receiving it. And it's coming from me, of course, here. Now I can go ahead and continue on. We can see I'm going to call delete, pass in my value, and then sure enough, it's gone. That's really cool. I can go ahead and do that again. Let's do this. Wow. Wow, that is cool. Go ahead and add that again. Now, of course, I can swipe to delete, but I'm going to go in, check out details, hit delete. Sure enough, it comes here really fast. Boom. It's gone automatically. So just like that, I'm sending and receiving message across my view models. You can send it to anywhere in your app. So if your app is changing or something is coming up from sleep, it's a good way of sending messages from an app layer into a view model layer. All right, now one thing I don't love is I don't love this here, and you may not love this either, is sending this big, you know, big blob over and registering like this. So this is where it gets kind of cool, is uh, you can actually implement the uh, I, um, uh, sorry, this is an I recipient, and this will then take in your message. So this is kind of cool. I'm going to say I recipient of uh, delete item message. And I'm going to go ahead and do this and say implement interface. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and delete this and delete this just like that. Scroll down to the bottom where it was implemented. And now I can have this I recipient of all these different messages. And this is much cleaner in my personal opinion. And I'm going to get a delete item message. I don't get any of that extra stuff that I need. And I can just say message dot value. And now I'm going to go ahead and delete that. So I can have all of these recipients coming in and I receive these messages over and over and over again. So as many unique messages as you want. Now I still need to register it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say uh, uh, week Mess, uh, reference messenger dot default dot register. And again, this is going to be a delete item message. But this time, I'm going to send in an I recipient. So this, there we go. Now, in this case, I don't need to set the Lambda or do anything like that. It's just there. So now let's go ahead and do this one more time and actually see how we can pass this across with this new I recipient. Uh, interface that we've implemented on our view model. So here we go. Again, I'm going to say like and subscribe. Hit add there. Tap on it. Delete. Boom. 
Just like that, I still get the message coming in. Sure enough, I get the value change. The base here of value is like and subscribe. And boom, just like that, it is gone. All right. There you have it, the easiest way. I love this implementation of a messenger for any .NET application, no matter what you're developing with. If you're developing a .NET MAUI app, Xamarin Forums app, WPF app, an Uno app, an Avalonia app, or any app for anything that's .NET, it doesn't even matter. It's just a .NET code. I love this messenger. I love that it um, is interface-based, so you can register it with your uh, dependency injection service and everything like that. I love this. I'm going to keep doing videos on this now that it's 8.0, it's out there into the world. And I'm going to, we're going to keep looking at how to further reduce some of that code clutter that you may have had or some other libraries out there from the past. I've created many of these and I just love there's a community toolkit to just make all my code prettier and, and it's all handled elegantly with the most modern .NET features as well. I'm going to put links to the documentation and the MVVM Toolkit 8.0 release blog that Sergio put out and some videos as well down in the show notes below. Hope that you enjoyed this video. I'm going to keep covering all these great features because I love it. Um, if you want to see anything specific, leave a comment below. And as always, don't forget to like if you liked any part of this video and subscribe because I buy, put out new videos here on my channel just about every single week. I'll also put this source code right on GitHub and I'll put it down there as well. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and supporting this channel and to everyone that has been joining the live streams that have been joining the membership and I'm going to be doing some additional live streams upcoming. So again, make sure you subscribe so you get notified when you ring that notification bell every time I go live or put out a new video. Anyways, thanks everyone for watching. Have a good one.